welcome to our video today and welcome to another discussion that we're having today in our video today we want to do a clear tactical analysis on the best formation and system that we think Mauricio Pochettino should implement at Chelsea. We know very well that Mauricio Pochettino has studied under Marcelo Bielsa and he likes high pressing, high possession football. We are going to analyze which tactical philosophy he should employ at Chelsea in order to succeed. Here in our video today, we are going to analyze three formations that Mauricio Pochettino can employ at Chelsea that he has used before to see which one best suits his personnel and which one can best produce the best out of his team that he currently has. But before we continue, I'd like you to like, share and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. This is a default formation that Chelsea can employ. Now, let's begin our analysis. We know that Mauricio Pochettino likes to line his team up in a 4-2-3-1 formation. In his previous time at Tottenham Hotspur, he liked to line up his formation like this. But at Chelsea, he has the benefit of having a ball-playing goalkeeper. At Tottenham, Loris did not offer this kind of option, but Kepa at Chelsea is good with the ball at his feet. I know this is a controversial statement that I've received from many comments areas, but I want to assure you to assure most viewers that yes, Kepa is good with, it, with the ball at his feet. So Kepa can step out and form a back three with Badiashile and Fofana playing alongside him. So Chelsea have the benefit of having two pacey wingers and a forward in Jackson who can make runs in behind. And therefore, Kepa doesn't have to play a long ball to Jackson but a long ball behind the opposition defense line for the runs of Mudrik and Raheem Stein. Therefore, most opponents may decide to sit off Chelsea in order to limit these runs being made by the pacey Chelsea forwards. This may create an opening for Nkunku to receive the ball in between the lines, turn back and play the ball to his advanced players who are quite fast. Therefore, the opposition team's midfield line may decide to drop deep to compensate this space with the entire team sitting in a mid block rather than pressing Chelsea high up the pitch. That is the benefit of having a goalkeeper good on the ball. Now, Chelsea might decide with, because Pochettino likes to have his fullbacks playing high and wide as wingbacks, but this may prevent a challenge because the opposition's wide players might cut passing lanes and force the wingers to drop deep to receive the ball. So when the fullbacks receive the ball, they will be pressed and most likely they will play the ball behind, therefore not occupying their forward option positions and also not progressing with the ball. Enzo Fernandez may be decided to be dropped into this Eric Dyer role where he can play quite well because of his excellent passing ability with Caicedo playing as a single pivot in midfield. This may see Enzo playing the ball to the wide areas and picking up runners, but in, in the event the ball is intercepted by the opposition centre back, Chelsea will, be, will remain vulnerable during counter attacks since the Center backs will be isolated in 1v1 situations and Enzo will fail to cover this area. From this clip, you can clearly see how Tottenham liked to build under Mauricio Pochettino. One midfielder, preferably Eric Dyer, dropping into the back line with Dembele operating as a single pivot, just like we've seen Caicedo would operate. And this system is one of the key pillars of positional play. Its main aim is to cover the wide areas and ensure the team has numerical superiority during build-up and this is one key facet of a Pochettino system. Pochettino's preference for a back three can be seen with his consistent dropping of his defensive midfielder into this position. Now, Pochettino might try to counter this by playing his wingers Modric and Raheem Sterling quite wide and forcing Nkunku to play in his favorite left attacking space position. This may force Rhys James to underlap and occupy the De Bruyne position in the right half space with Enzo Fernandez staying deep to cover the ball. 
But Chilwell is not good at tucking in as, and playing as a center back. Therefore, Chilwell will prefer to advance high up the pitch where because he's an offensive fullback. Chris James has played as a right center back before, but this has limited his attacking output. And Fofana is not the best on the ball to be picking wide players. This might see Chilwell getting dropped from the starting 11 and Modric playing quite wide. Nkunku shifting to occupy his favorite left half space position with Sterling cutting inside and Rhys James advancing forward. This might see the introduction of Mark Kukurela in the team to play as a left back since he's comfortable tucking in to play as a third centre back and Badiashile's excellent ball playing abilities can see him playing the sweeper role, picking up Enzo Fernandez and Caicedo in between the lines. Once the ball is at this position, Enzo and Caicedo can rotate the ball amongst themselves and Enzo can dictate the tempo of the game. The problem with having Kukurela in the team is that recently during the end of the season he was quite caught out during defensive transitions. This created a problem for Chelsea and this might result in problems for Chelsea since Rhys James might be caught up high up. Pitch. I've explained why Sterling uh, starts with Madweke in the previous video that I did. So, Pochettino might decide to start with three centre backs by playing Levi Colwell as a left back who tucks in and forms the third centre back, which might be a good option for Chelsea. Levi Colwell in this position is excellent at moving with the ball high up the pitch. He's done that for Brighton. He's good at playing line breaking passes. I've done an analysis on him and is able to link up with the likes of Enzo Fernandez. The problem here is that Modric is not quite good at crossing the ball down the left wing channel and therefore this might see Madueke being started down the left because he's left footed so that he can attack the byline and make crosses in the box for the runs of Jackson, Nkunku and Raheem Sterling. This is a position that Madueke is not famed for and therefore the play might be directed towards the right hand side for his James who is able to be making this cross and contributing excellently offensive. This is one way in which Pochettino might use. Colwell is much defensively able than Kukurek. Now, another thing that, another option that Pochettino might try to use is the deployment of a different formation and this formation is the 43 formation. This formation might see the Nkunku played as a number 8, but this is not his preferred position. Therefore, Jackson will be kicked out of the team for Lewis Hall to come and occupy this left center midfield position. Modric and Lyon Sterling may be tasked to play quite wide, with Nkunku operating as a false 9, having a diamond shaped in midfield with Chilwell and Rhys James just playing close to Enzo Fernandez but why? This diamond midfield formation will ensure that Chelsea rotate the ball in midfield and dominate possession but this might be a problem for Chelsea because they like a clear number nine in the box. Caicedo might be tasked to occupy and attack this channel in the right half space the way N'Golo Kante was tasked but that will be limiting his defensive strength. Therefore his James might try to advance and occupy this right half space position to link up with Ryan Sterling and again this might limit Ben Chilwell who will be tasked to play quite deeper yet he likes to offensively attack. So Chilwell will be pushing forward to try to attack, Modric will be cutting in and therefore Lewis Hall will be tasked to drop in and fill in for Ben Chilwell and this is the system that Chelsea can employ. 2-3 with both the three midfielders covering for the fullbacks who are advancing forward. The problem is when Chelsea lose the ball in these situations, the midfielders need to know when to press so that they are not caught out and they should be able to run and cover for the fullbacks who are high. This might be problematic for the likes of Lewis Hall. Caicedo has done this at Brighton, may not face a problem, but Enzo might be isolated in midfield and Hall might not be able to beat excellent wingers at this situations like Mohamed Salah who can be able to beat most defenders in the league to score goal. 
You can see from this clip how Pochettino prefers his wing backs high up the pitch. He prefers his forward line to play close to the striker so that they may give the striker options. And this requires a formation that is able to accommodate wing backs who are able to push forward and express their attacking prowess. Chelsea has two good offensive fullbacks in Ben Chilwell and S. James. So we are going to understand which formation is able to accommodate both of them as well as accommodate Enzo Fernandez and Moises Caicedo in midfield. I prefer the 3-4-3. Three, three. This might see Modric dropping out of the starting 11 with Nkunku starting as a left forward. This is because he likes to play as a second striker and attack the left half space channel. This may see the introduction of Thiago Silva who is good at playing as the sweeper center back. Kepa might be dropping from the goal line during build up to give them numerical superiority. This might leave Caicedo and Enzo Fernandez free in midfield that may force the opposition midfielders to push forward against them. The wingbacks might start high and wide and therefore drag the opposition wingers and this might see Raheem Sterling and Nkunku dropping in these areas to receive the ball and linking up with the wingbacks. The centre-backs, if they try to commit to this dropping in forwards, might leave spaces for Jackson and Nkunku to attack. Therefore, most teams may prefer to sit off Chelsea. These are teams that are not usually the big six, but teams that Chelsea might face often. So Nkunku and Sterling might start at narrower positions in this formation. Their narrow positions might force the opposition fullbacks to play close and tight towards them. This might open up areas in the wide areas for the runs of Chilwell and James. This might give Chelsea numerical superiority in the attacking part of the pitch. The position of Caicedo and Enzo Fernandez might be well since both of them might operate as a double pivot the way Jorginho and Kante used to operate, but now more technically gifted players in Enzo Fernandez and athletic players like Caicedo. Enzo can be deep in midfield detecting the tempo of the game, while Thiago Silva might be operating as the sweeper, playing long balls from defense and linking defense from attack. Another key strength that Thiago Silva offers in this kind of situation is that he offers experience. And his experience is highly needed on the pitch since he's the one who's able to control the defense line and the midfield. Thiago Silva playing in this position is aided by two young wide center backs who are able to cover for him with their pace. And therefore Chelsea will remain solid during attack. Without the ball, Chelsea can drop in a 5-2-3 formation with both wingbacks dropping in and the two holding midfielder together with the three centre-backs forming a shield in front of Kepa, therefore covering Kepa's flaws from long-range shots. So the two attack left, the two inside forwards will be tasked to be switching momentarily to help their wingbacks not get isolated into the one situation. And the event Chelsea win the ball in these areas, they are able to excellently counter-attack because of the pace of Jackson, the pace of Ryan Sterling, and Nkunku who are making runs at the already disjointed opposition backline. These are some of the tactical problems that Pochettino has to face at Chelsea. We'll analyze, we have analyzed three formations that he can use, the 4-2-3-1, the 4-3-3 and the 3-4-3. In my opinion, the 3-4-3 might be better, but Pochettino prefers to defend in a 4-4-2 system. Therefore, he might know how he will incorporate players in his 4-2-3-1 formation. Most of the times you expect certain players to start, but this might not be the case with Pochettino. Therefore, Pochettino has the plethora of talent to pick from and decide which players to pick in his starting eleven. This is an exciting project that most Chelsea fans expect to see how to pan out. Pochettino starts his job next week on Monday and we would like to see how he will set up Chelsea in both the offensive and defensive phase. I will keep you up with his first game, whether it will be indoors or within. We would like to see how he will transform Chelsea Football Club. If you stayed with us in the video, thanks for watching.